In this demo, we're going to take an existing cluster that's configured with a distributed switch, and we're going to transition that cluster to use vSphere configuration profiles. So first things first, we'll just confirm that our hosts are all compliant with the current host profile. We'll navigate to our host profile section, and we'll confirm that all our hosts are currently compliant with the attached host profile. We're just making sure that all our hosts have the same uniform configuration. So all our hosts are compliant. Every host has the desired configuration that we want. Now these hosts are configured with a vSphere distributed switch, as we can see here. They've got several port groups um, on this distributed switch. So this is something vSphere configuration profiles did not support in the technology preview, but with vSphere 8 update 1, vSphere configuration profiles now supports clusters configured with vSphere distributed switches. So to begin the transition, we'll go to the configure tab and configuration under desired state. And we'll click the create configuration button. We'll do some checks against the cluster to make sure it can be managed at a cluster level. This is typically ensuring that the image is being managed by vSphere Lifecycle Manager, that we're using a single image definition. If we were still using the baseline-based image management, we would have to first transition to use single image before we can use vSphere configuration profiles. So we do get a, an alert or a warning that's telling us that a host profile is attached to this cluster. This is fine at, uh, at this point in time. It's letting us know that once the whole cluster has been transitioned to vSphere configuration profiles, the host profile will no longer be the source of truth. And ideally, we would detach it from the cluster to avoid any management confusion. So the first thing we're going to do is import from a reference host. So we'll select host one as our reference host and click import. So we've successfully imported the configuration details based on host one, but it accounts for all the hosts in the cluster. So let's click next. There'll be some validation of that configuration against all the hosts in the cluster. Again, just to make sure that everything looks good. Now we can export that configuration by clicking the export configuration button. And we'll take a look at that just to see how it looks. Now we can see we get the JSON output, output of our uh, configuration. There's a ESX section with all the, um, the host agnostic information. So all the configuration that would be agnostic across all the hosts. So we can, we can scroll through that and see all the various bits for system, for network, the VM kernel, storage, etc. And then we have some uh, host specific information. We've got a host override section here, and this is for our host ending in IP address 53. So that's host three for us. We've got host two, and we've got a host specific section for host one. The reason why host one is under host specific and host two and three are under host override is because host one was the host that we chose to be our, our reference. So going back to our workflow. So we've had a look at the configuration. We can click next and, and more pre-checks will be initiated just to make sure that none of the hosts are in an inconsistent state and that we can transition the the configuration to be managed at a cluster level. Now, because we're just doing a transition and we know that all the hosts were, were configured as per our desire, there's not gonna be any changes made to the host at this time. So we can see that you know, zero hosts will be put into maintenance mode, any host level details, there's, there's nothing to report because we're not making any config changes right now. We're simply changing the management of the configuration from host profiles to use vSphere configuration profiles. So we can click finish and apply.
So cluster level configuration management has been enabled and there'll be a, a compliance check that will also be initiated again, just to make sure that the hosts are compliant with the new cluster level configuration. And as expected, all our hosts are compliant. And this is also made possible with the support for vSphere distributed switches. The hosts are still attached to the vSphere distributed switch, so there's no incompatibility issues there. We can inspect the configuration at any, any of these points. We can look at some of the network configuration, look at our VM kernel NICs. For example, we can check VMK0. We can see the distributed port group that it is attached to. And we can check the host override sections as well for hosts two and three. And we can see that they are also attached to the same distributed port group. So just for the sake of completeness, the last thing we're going to do is detach the host profile from this cluster so that we can avoid any management confusion that we don't have a host profile attached to a cluster that is managed by vSphere configuration profiles. So just right click on the cluster, go down to host profiles and click detach. So that concludes this demo on transitioning an existing vSphere cluster from using host profiles to using vSphere configuration profiles, also including the support in 8 update 1 for coexistence with vSphere distributed switch.